In newer buildings, it's becoming increasingly common for EVAC fire alarm systems or emergency voice alarm communication systems to be installed in place of traditional horn strobes. Unlike horns, which can only play a tone, EVAC systems involve speakers throughout a building that can be used to play virtually anything, from tones to messages to live paging. This means that the fire department or whoever's on scene during an emergency can give live instructions to occupants of a building from the fire command center. These systems are actually required by code in many new types of buildings. Here in Boston, especially in high-rise buildings, these systems are really common. Something you might not have noticed, though, is that each of these systems has a tendency to play very similar evacuation tones. For example, if it's a simplex system, it probably plays a tone something like this. If it's an EST system, it probably plays a tone something like this. Pretty much every other brand of fire alarm system is going to play a similar Code 3 tone. For example, Notifier might play this tone. Other Honeywell systems might play this tone. Siemens systems play this tone. And so on and so forth. But why is that? I made a video about this exact topic a couple years ago, but I was in like 8th grade when I made that video, so in the interest of making a higher quality, more detailed, and more current video, we're going to talk about this today. Before we answer the question, why do all of these systems sound the same, let's talk about code, because we're going to have to reference some code when we talk about why these systems are the way they are. The National Fire Protection Association, or NFPA, has standards that are widely accepted across the entire country, however, it's important to make the distinction between codes and laws. NFPA codes and standards are written by qualified fire protection engineers, but they're not laws until federal, state, or local governments actually enforce them. In this way, NFPA standards are just guidelines or suggestions that can be enforced by governments. Now, of course, if the federal government were to pass a law relating to fire safety, then that would not be optional to follow. Because of the Supremacy Clause, every state and local municipality would have to follow that law. Pretty much every state has adopted NFPA standards in some way. Of course, since they are just guidelines, some states choose to be a little more strict, so they may adopt NFPA standards and add some regulations, and some states may choose to be a little more lax, so they might choose to omit some parts of it. Now that you're thinking about fire codes, let's switch gears and talk about the Boston Fire Code. This right here is the Boston Fire Protection Order, and as you can see, it states that when a fire alarm system activates in a high-rise building, the fire alarm system should automatically A, notify the fire department, and B, this is the important part, sound an alert pre-signal tone, and it states that this alert tone should be a 900 Hz tone pulsed to produce one round of code 4 at approximately one second intervals. Now, even though this section relates to high-rises, you see this code 4 pattern a lot. For example, this system plays a code 4 tone. My middle school played a code 4 tone. And the TD Garden plays a code 4 tone. After the pre-signal tone plays, this recorded message will come through the speakers with this exact script. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the important part here is that it says, If your floor evacuation signal sounds after this message, blah 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 then you evacuate what could that floor evacuation signal possibly be well if you go down to part d it says that after this message plays the evacuation signal will sound on the floor below above and the floor where the alarm was activated and the evacuation signal shall be as required by the massachusetts state building code and here in the Massachusetts Building Code Amendment to the International Building Code, it states that if the fire department decides that a total evacuation is required, then a distinctive signal can be used in place of a voice message. And what could that distinctive signal possibly be? Massachusetts State Building Code does not specify the Code 3 tone, but Massachusetts Fire Code is based off of the International Building Code, which is based off of NFPA 72, which specifies Temporal 3 as the standard evacuation signal. That's why pretty much every system in Massachusetts is going to play a very similar Code 3 tone. Of course, many brands have different variations of the Code 3 tone, which is why sometimes you'll see inconsistencies. But very clearly, with a lot of brands, there is a preferred Boston-specific tone. 
Now, even if you leave Boston and go to the suburbs near Boston, you still pretty much hear the exact same evacuation tones being used. Pretty much every voice evacuation system is just going to play a tone with no message, and it's probably going to be one of the tones listed earlier. Why is that? If we revisit our Massachusetts State Building Code Amendment, you can see that where the head of the fire department determines that partial or selective evacuation is not desired, but a total evacuation is required, then a distinctive signal can be used instead of a voice alarm. So basically what that means is that in a building, if the standard practice is just to evacuate when the fire alarm sounds, you do not need a voice evacuation message, you just need a distinctive tone. Again, this creates a little bit of a gray area because they don't specify exactly which tone needs to be used, but a lot of these systems are maintained by companies that also service Boston, so in most cases, they'll just select the Boston-specific tone. This is up to the local jurisdictions to decide, but most of the time, they'll just refer back to NFPA 72 and select the temporal tone anyways. Now, of course, because this is up to the authority having jurisdiction to decide, you might see some inconsistencies, you might see some random tones that are approved. either because the jurisdiction wants it or because the inspector just doesn't care that much. But either way, generally, you will see the same tones used in Boston. This does explain why most voice evacuation systems, especially those in low-rise buildings, do not play a message. They just play a tone, because it's not required. I think people frequently misinterpret the reasons why a voice evacuation system is specified. Yes, a voice evacuation system that plays a pre-recorded message to evacuate can be helpful, but mainly the reason why a voice evacuation system is specified in places of assembly in larger buildings is because somebody, especially the fire department, can page through the building and provide information to building occupants. Voice evacuation systems are not exclusively valued only because of their ability to deliver pre-recorded messages. Voice evacuation systems have value because of their communication abilities. Even then, most voice evacuation systems, even the ones that only play a tone, will still have an evacuation message function. For example, this system at my high school, which only plays a code 3 tone on general alarm, has buttons for different evacuation messages that would be used by the fire department. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope you've enjoyed learning about why voice evacuation systems in Boston sound like this. the building. We have students visiting the building. Um Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.